So we talked about some prophetic flows, how people hear from God, and now I want to give you some prophetic tips. Let me just give you a little more insight into how the prophetic works, and it might help you sharpen your ability to hear God's voice and to know what to expect. Number one is to say that there are conditional, listen to me, there are conditional prophecies and there are unconditional prophecies, meaning that there are some prophecies that only happen if you meet a certain condition. And so let me start with that. Conditional prophecy is dependent upon, listen, it's dependent upon human action. We all know the scripture where it says, if my people, listen to that, if, if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I would hear from heaven, I would forgive their sins, heal, heal their land, etc. We all know that scripture, but there's a big if there, that if they humble themselves, that we see Jonah, he gives a prophetic word to the Ninevites, and he says, there's destruction, you guys are going to be overturned. But what happens is, they repent. And because they repent, God relents. Even in Isaiah 38, the prophet Isaiah, he goes to King Hezekiah, and what does he say? He says, get your stuff in order, get your house in order, you are surely going to die, you are not going to recover. Hezekiah is sick, and that's not what he wants to hear. And what does King Hezekiah do? The Bible says he turns to the wall, and he begins to cry and weep, and he says to the Lord, but I've been faithful, Lord, I've been honorable to you, remember that. And then all of a sudden, as the prophet Isaiah is leaving, God speaks to him again and he says, go back in there and tell King Hezekiah that because of his tears, because of his faithfulness, because he cried out to me, I'm adding 15 more years to his life. And so this is what we call a prophetic reversal. That Isaiah comes in with a sure word of prophecy. He says, you're going to die. But because King Hezekiah cries out to the Lord, because he asks the Lord for more time, because he asks the Lord for mercy, God says, I'm going to reverse that. And so understand, all personal prophecy, listen to me, all personal prophecy, whenever you get a prophetic word that's strictly for you, it may or may not happen depending on what you do. That you may get a prophetic word about you starting a business and being a successful entrepreneur. But if you don't get out there and you don't start making phone calls and you don't start making investments, if you don't start doing something, then it won't ever come to pass. You may have a prophetic word about you getting married one day. But if you don't meet people, if you don't ever clean yourself up, put on some perfume and try to let people know that you're available, you may not get married. That personal prophecy is always conditional. In 1 Samuel 13, 13, the prophet Samuel shows up to King Saul and he tells him that God would have established your kingdom forever, but you did not do what God was telling you to do. That Saul, he made sacrifices so that he could win a war, but he was not supposed to do that. The person that was supposed to make the sacrifices was the prophet Samuel. But because Saul steps outside of the grace that has been given to him and he's disobedient to the Lord, now Samuel shows up and he says, you would have been the king of Israel for a very long time and your legacy would have remained forever, but now it's going to be taken away from you. And so listen, all personal prophecy can be taken away from you. All personal prophecy can go away because of something you do because you disqualified yourself or you did nothing at all. And so you may hear a great prophetic word about what you're supposed to accomplish, what you're supposed to be, and it's very confirming to you. But God then wants you to position yourself so that you can attain what he wants you to have. Remember, God said there was a promised land. There's a promised land out there for the Israelites. But many of them died in the wilderness because they did not want to possess it. You have to want to possess the prophecy over your life. So when you're giving a prophetic word, especially if it's a personal one, it's always conditional. There are people that will say, 
I ran into a false prophet. That person th didn't tell me the truth. But the reality is, maybe you didn't follow the instruction of the prophetic word. Maybe you didn't try to pursue it. That a prophetic word is not going to be FedEx to you overnight. It's not going to come by UPS. You have got to work it out with fear and trembling. And so we have conditional prophecies, but then there are these unconditional prophecies, meaning that it's going to happen regardless of circumstance or people. That it can be delayed, it can be adjusted, but it can never be canceled. It will never go away. It will never be taken away. For example, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, that no one knows the day or hour that he's coming back. That Jesus himself, he doesn't know when he's going to return. Only the Father knows. But it's sure going to happen that eventually Jesus will return. And so that's an unconditional prophecy. That is going to happen no matter what. And so understand, whether you receive a prophecy or you give one, sometimes they are conditional and sometimes they are unconditional. Conditional in that it depends on the person and what they do. That God says, I set before you life and death, blessings and, and, and cursings. You have got to make a choice. But then there are those unconditional prophecies that are going to happen no matter what. The end will come. Christ will return. Number two. When you're giving a prophetic word, if you really want to be accurate, if you don't want to miss the mark, then what I'm telling you is to trust the initial revelation you have. Listen to that again. If you want to be accurate, then you really need to trust the initial revelation you have. That matters most. Meaning that if you get a word, if you just get one image, just say it. Just say that one word or image. If there is no interpretation, if there is no application, if there is no timing, don't try to force something that is not there. And so you always trust the initial revelation you get when you're prophesying. So I'm telling you, you need to trust the initial revelation. But where you can go wrong sometimes is in the interpretation, the application, and the timing. That sometimes you try to interpret the word more or interpret the image that you see for a person and you might be wrong. Sometimes you try to give an application and you say, this is what you need to do now and you could be wrong. Sometimes you try to give the timing and you say, you're going to have a baby next year. And yes, you saw them getting pregnant, but it wasn't going to happen next year. Maybe it was going to be three years later and now they're mad at you because you got the timing off. All I'm trying to say is this is that it can be difficult to interpret something, to give somebody the right application and the timing. And it's not that you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying that it's hard to do those things, but you can always trust the initial revelation you get. If God showed you something, if God said something to, to you, you need to let that out, sweetheart. But if you are still new to the prophetic and you aren't that sure, be careful when it comes to interpreting applying and giving out the timing of a word or an image that you see for somebody. Prophetic tip number three, there's something that I call faith targeting. A lot of times I can look out into a crowd. I can look out into a congregation and God will highlight people for me that I need to give this person a prophetic word. Sometimes I'll see an angel walk beside somebody or I can't keep my eyes off of somebody. It's like, I'll look at them and I know God's going to give me an image. He's going to give me a word for that person. But sometimes I do what's called faith targeting. I am very confident that I can give a word to anybody in a room. I'm very confident that I can line up anybody in a room and I can give them a word. And the reason for that is because of what I call faith targeting. In that sometimes you might not immediately have a word for somebody, but God wants you to exercise your faith. Sometimes you look at somebody and instantly you have a word, you have an image, you have something to say for that person or for that situation. But other times you'll be looking at somebody and it's like, God, you're not giving me anything. Now, I want you to pay attention to that because sometimes God is not saying anything. And if God is not saying anything, sweetheart, you need to close your mouth. But sometimes God just wants you to exercise your faith. In other words, what I'm saying is that sometimes when I'm about to prophesy over somebody, and if I'm not sensing anything right away, I just quote scripture to them. 
I'll tell them that God loves you, that he hasn't forsaken you, that God is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. All that is, is just good scripture. But as I do that, as I exercise my faith and I quote scripture to somebody, all of a sudden my flow begins to kick in. When you don't hear a word immediately for somebody, if it doesn't seem like God is highlighting somebody, then you can begin to press in with your faith and begin to speak the word, the written word over the person in front of you. And then if nothing comes, that's perfectly fine. At least you told them the truth of God's written word, the Bible. Prophetic tip number four, there's something called prophetic probing. What that means is sometimes as a seer, as a nobby, as a dreamer, whatever flow you have, sometimes you want more clarity for what you're seeing. And so you may look at the person and say something like, do you work at a construction company? Uh, do you have children? Why am I seeing two kids? Basically, sometimes you're getting images or you're hearing things and you're trying to bring about an interpretation, right? That can be hard to do. You're trying to bring about application or perhaps timing. And so sometimes as a prophetic voice or somebody in the office of prophet, you might probe a little bit and ask somebody, I'm seeing this. The, I'm seeing this. Does that mean anything to you? You're only doing that just so you have clarity on what you're seeing sometimes. For example, recently I looked at somebody and I saw her dancing in my head. I saw her doing all these different types of dance moves. And I look at her and I say, do, do you dance? And she immediately responded and said, yeah, I danced. And then from there, I got an interpretation and a flow on what to say to her next. Do you see what I'm saying? It's not a matter of having doubts. It's not that you don't have faith. It's just that sometimes you need clarity for what you're seeing. And so you might just probe a little bit, ask a question to the person, to the recipient. I see this. Have you experienced that before? Number five, and this is so important. You've got to hear me on this one. The prophetic is not meant to embarrass people. The prophetic is not meant to embarrass people. If you are in the office of prophet, you may do some correcting. You may do some discipline, but ideally you don't want to embarrass people that because I'm a fivefold minister, if I ever see something over somebody or I hear a word about somebody and it's going to be embarrassing if I were to say it publicly that they need to be corrected, they're dealing with some sin. I usually wait to pull them to the side. And I'll tell them, I saw this, this in your life. Is that, is that what's going on? Do you, you need to repent of this, right? You see what I'm saying? You don't go out of your way to embarrass somebody in the prophetic. And I'm just telling you that the only people that should be giving hard correction words are those that are in the office of prophet or those that are apostles, the visionary leader of your church house. You've got to understand that discipline is done by the fivefold ministry. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. But accountability is done by the congregation. That it's one thing if another congregation member keeps another member accountable. That maybe you say something like, we shouldn't be doing that brother, we shouldn't be doing that sister because God wants more of us. But someone who's in a five-fold office, God has entrusted them to bring discipline to his body. And so a five-fold minister, they might bar somebody, they might excommunicate, they might stop somebody and bring a hard correction word because they have been graced to do so. They have the grace to bring a word of correction, to bring a word of discipline and still be loving in the process. What I'm trying to say is that regardless of if you're in the office of prophet or you just have the prophetic gifting, your goal should not be to embarrass people. The Bible says that love covers a multitude of sin. And so how do you love that person and preserve their reputation? And if God is going to ask for a corrective word done in public, that's going to be by somebody in the office of prophets, somebody that's been given that authority, somebody from a fivefold office. Prophetic tip number six, prophecy is not a substitute for God's written word. Let me say that again so you can really hear me. And I need you to really look at the screen when I say this. Prophecy, the prophetic, is not a substitute for the written word of God. Sometimes you get what I call prophetic junkies. And they get one prophetic word after another prophetic word after another prophetic word. And they don't even read the written word. Sweetheart, you've got to get in your Bible. So if you are somebody that likes to operate in the prophetic or you receive prophetic words, 
these things, this gift does not replace the 66 books known as the Bible. Don't allow yourself to become a prophetic junkie in which you love the gift more than God himself. As a matter of fact, there are some churches that I know of, they will give people prophetic words and by their policy, you're not allowed to get another prophetic word from them until six months later. In other words, you've got to work out that prophetic word. You can't be chasing after the prophetic all the time. You need to be a person of prayer. You need to be a person of the written word. The prophetic is wonderful, but don't put the prophetic above the written word or time spent with God. That's important. You're not responsible, nor can you control how someone responds to the prophetic word. That if you are accurate and you really heard from God, you're not making a mistake, you're not missing it, and you tell somebody something that they really don't like. For example, I've given prophetic words to people before, and I told them that God has given them the gift of singleness. That they're not going to get married. They're going to be single. And I didn't even know them, but when I told them this, they said, yeah, I've been single for a long time. Now, some people don't want to hear that, but maybe... What people want isn't what God wants sometimes. And so you give a prophetic word and people might get mad. They might get frustrated. They might not believe it. But if you really heard from God, you're not responsible if people don't like what they hear. That even when Elijah, he gives the prophetic word to King Ahab that it's not going to rain anymore. It's not going to rain except by my word because you've been unfaithful, Ahab. Even though Ahab, Jezebel, And many people didn't like that word. It was still a true word. And Elijah had to say it. He had to follow through with it, even though people didn't like it. 